Hello guys, slash Lawrence Wayne here, and after a very, very, very long time, I'm finally going to make another LOS video. This one right here. So, right now, LOS 2, which is the LOS I'm working on, it's... I've been working on it a lot, but you can't see it, so... Because I'm working on the console line and stuff, there's not much to see. And the programming language, and it's basic which I will be showing you today. I'll also be showing you something very exciting that you can test LOS yourself. The NS Basic yourself. Run little programs. I'll explain that later. Let's just talk about NS Basic right now. NS Basic stands for Not So Basic which, because it's based off of Basic which is a programming language used in the very old times. Common line would be 20 go to 10 for example because it was based off numbers line numbers at the beginning now mine uses the capital letter format like go to here and stuff but it's more advanced so it's not so basic it's more advanced so we have um, tag based go to and whatnot now I'll be teaching you how to code for it as a beginner, so like someone who's never programmed before. Now, I'll be honest, I am probably not a very good teacher, but I'm going to try my best. Um, we'll be doing the basic print hello world, um, and then we'll try variables, and some math, and some go to if statements, and then we'll end with a basic time bomb program. So, how can you test LOS? Well, I'll be showing you how to make code for LOS over here. And when I'm done, you can take your code, you can make your own code, and you can send it to me, either via YouTube, PM, Twitter, if it can fit in 140 characters, or YouTube comment, whatever method you choose to get the code to me, and I will reply to you with what LOS did. Now there's also another option, an LOS emulator, NS Basic emulator, made by Jack, a friend of mine who was originally going to make my website. So I'll put a link to the, that in the description as well. Also please check the description if I made any mistakes or if LOS has changed now. So please check the description before posting your code. There might be some important stuff in there. So, um, so let's begin. Um, I'm going to begin with a basic print hello world code. So I'll type it out print hello world and end. Oop. So here's the basic code. Here's a basic code sample of how LOS would work. So this, for those new to programming, it works with commands, and in this case, it works per line. So each line has a little command that the computer then runs and does what it says. So in this case, we print hello world and then we end. Print is like make displays, a computer programming term. It's to make things display. Now here are a few important things about LOS. This is not valid. That will end up printing hello comma only this. This is not valid, it will print nothing. This is not valid, it will print an error. You can type whatever you want after this, it won't change the code, it will only make the interpreter slightly slower by confusing it. Spaces are very, very important in an basic. It separates all variables. You can't put two spaces here, it will cause problems. Must be one space between these two. Also, you can't write print in lowercase, that won't work. It's to be print. So what this will do is it will print hello world. Also another thing, this underscore is usually replaced with a space when printing, because you can't use spaces because it confuses it. The underscore is replaced with a space when it runs. Right now it doesn't actually work. I have it in the code, but it doesn't. And then end, which is pretty obvious, ends the program. 
So I'll show you it running now. First example running on LOS. So let's explain something about this um, thing you're seeing here. This is the OS starting. Um, this here is it printing what's in the file. So the code that we're running. This is the OS memory free. Don't worry about that. That's just for me. Some open lines. Program starts. Prints hello world like we have over here. As you can see that underscore isn't replaced because of a bug in the system. And then it ends. So nothing special of course. We're just learning. So um, back to the programming board. Okay. So that was lesson one. Um, next up, printing variables and stuff like that. So in order to print variables, um, you need to first learn variables and stuff. So we have print b, which prints a byte, because we're working with bytes here. Bytes are up to 255, numbers up to 255. That's how big they can get. So... Yeah, you can't go over that number, otherwise we have overflow, which means it goes back to 1, if you try count over it. So there are a few things you need to know about variables in um, NSBasic. In our previous example, this over here is a constant, or non-changing variable. It has nothing around it, doesn't have quotes or anything. But if we go print b, and we type 16, this will print the number 16 no matter what. Now, if we type in 16 in brackets, what this will do is something completely different. It will look into RAM address 16. So this is variable 16. For those new to programming, variables are like little slots of numbers. So you can do x equals 1 plus 1, print x. You know, if you do maths, you should know that x is a variable. That's kind of thing. But instead of letters like x, y, z, x, y, z, a, b, c, we work with numbers in brackets. So those are the round brackets. Then we have square brackets. This will do is it will look it up in an external system, not to the memory. Because the round brackets only go up to 50. You can't go beyond 50 in that because of memory limitations and the realm start of RAM. But with this, you can go up to like infinity when it's implemented. So that will work with a file, which you there will be a command that allows you to choose which file you're working with or make a backup of these variables and stuff. And then the last type is these brackets. These are system variables, which are non-changing, but they're always useful. It could be the screen size, it could be the GPU, it could be the operating system version, it could be the last key pressed, it could be the how many of time this program has run, it could be if the program's running in the background or the foreground. Things you're getting from the operating system console thing. So external, what communicates with the operating system. So those are the variables. So if we go set one variable one to fifty. This here, so first it says set, that's the command for the computer. It says variable number one in address one and sets that to the number fifty. So now if we go print B one and to make the code valid, um, what this will do is it will print 50, which is what's stored in number 1, as you can see here. So, yeah, that's pretty simple as well. I'll show you how that works now as well. The expected output, so ignoring all this stuff, program starts 50, prints sets 1 to 50, and prints out one, and then ends. So there we have 50. So now you learned how to use main.
basic variables. This, by the way, is serial, as you can see here. Get the port rate and stuff. It's com ports. So, um, to the next lesson. Okay, so last, no, not last at all, actually. Do beam math, which is byte math, doing math with bytes. So we could say set variable 1 to 5, set variable 2 to 20, we go p math 3 to 1, oh, 1 plus 2. What this command will do is it says byte math, the answer will be stored to variable number 3, and it will do 1 plus 2. Again, spaces, very important. You need spaces between it. You cannot have this. That is unacceptable, at least to the compiler. Um, has to be spaces. We could go print b. Um, number three, and I can go print f five, ten is so just have that. Mm, all right, and then end at the end. So. I hope you understand this. It's pretty simple to understand. Setting variable 1 to 5, set variable 2 to 20, add variable 1 to 2, and set it in slot 3, and then print slot 3. So it's 5 plus 20. 5 plus 20 equals 25. Print 25. Easy, right? Here is it in action, hopefully, if I coded it right. So let's see if that one worked. 5 plus 10 is 20... Well, hold on. 5 plus... Oh! It's a typo. Either this was supposed to be 20, or this was supposed to be 10. But you get the point. 5 plus 20. Add them. Prints out the output, and ends. So we're doing 5 plus 20. We pretend this is a 2. And this, of course. 